Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the consolidated statement of financial position. And by the statement of financial position, we mean the balance sheet. And we're going to specifically look at non-controlling interest. Now, we have done a couple of lessons on consolidated statement of financial position. So this is lesson four. So if you do not know or if you do not fully understand consolidations and specifically consolidated statement of financial position, please check the other first three lessons. Okay, we have lesson one, two, and three. You'll find the links to those lessons in the description below. But this is the first one on non-controlling interest. The first three lessons dealt with wholly owned subsidiaries. Okay, so if you check those ones out, it will give you a better understanding before you get to non-controlling interest because we are getting more and more advanced. Now, what is consolidated financial statements? Consolidated financial statements, as we've always said, are the financial statements of a group presented as those of a single economic entity, and that is according to IFRS 10. And what is non-controlling interest specifically? Non-controlling interest is the equity in the subsidiary not attributable to directly or indirectly to a parent company. So it is the equity in the subsidiary that's not attributable to the parent company. And non-controlling interest means that the parent company does not own the subsidiary fully, okay, doesn't own all the shares in the subsidiary. So this is not a wholly owned subsidiary. This is a partly owned subsidiary. That is why the other parts that you do not own will be the non-controlling interest. Now, we're going to go through an example of completing a consolidated statement of financial position and showing you how we can account for non-controlling interest and other aspects like goodwill when you have non-controlling interest. As with wholly owned subsidiaries, 100% of the assets and liabilities of subsidiaries are included in the consolidated statement of financial position. So is the case with partly owned subsidiaries because the consolidated statement of financial position shows all of the assets and liabilities that are controlled by the parent company. We're talking about owning shares of over 50%. That is why the parent company has control. So we consolidate all the assets and liabilities that are controlled by the parent company. And you'll see now how that works with the help of the example we're about to go through. However, since a portion of the net assets of the subsidiary belong to investors from outside the group, and these investors called the non-controlling interest, this figure must be shown in the equity section of the consolidated statement of financial position. So what we are seeing in this notes here, in essence, remember we have done lesson one, two, and three where we have wholly owned subsidiaries where we don't have non-controlling interest. We consolidated the assets and the liabilities of the entity, okay? Obviously, taking into account other aspects that we looked at in the other lessons. So what we are seeing here, we are doing the exact same thing. We are consolidating the assets and the liabilities that are controlled by the parent company. But we need to show the non-controlling interest portion, meaning the portion that is not controlled by the parent company or the portion that is not owned, that does not belong to the parent company. We need to show it in the equity section of the consolidated statement of financial position. And that is what these statements are saying. Now, with non-controlling interest, there are two alternative ways of calculating it in the group statement of financial position. Non-controlling interest at the acquisition date can be valued at its proportionate share of the fair value of the subsidiary's net assets or full or fair value, usually based on the market value of the shares held by the non-controlling interest. Now, these are the two ways you can calculate non-controlling interest. The example we're going to look at is going to use the proportionate share of the fair value of the subsidiary's net assets. And we are doing another one based on the fair value as well. You'll find the link to that lesson as well in the description below. Okay, so let's get into the example and show you how to do this. Example tells us here that Coco Limited has owned 75% of the share capital of Chapel Limited since Chapel Limited's incorporation. The statement of financial position of the two companies on the 28th of February 2020 are given below. And we have the statement of financial positions for the two companies, Coco Limited being the parent company and Chapel Limited in orange being the subsidiary company. And we are asked to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position using the proportionate share method. Okay, and we're going to use that method, which is a common method of doing consolidations, especially in simple ways. Okay, so what is the first thing that we do? Let's go line by line and try and figure out if 
this one will appear in the consolidated statement of financial position. So let's first go to the non-current assets portion, and then we'll look at property plan and equipment, which is the first item in the non-current assets. We are not told anything about property plan and equipment, and we know that we'll just add the two together, the 50,000 rand plus the 35,000 rand, and that will go into the consolidated statement of financial position. Okay, and remember we are adding everything even though the parent company owns 75%, like we mentioned in the notes before. So if we add 50,000 rand of the property plan and equipment of the parent company and 35,000 rand of the subsidiary company, we get 85,000 rand. So here in blue, you'll see what will appear in the consolidated statement of financial position. The next thing that we're going to do is to look at the investment in shares. Now we know that the investment in shares of the subsidiary, which appears here in the parent company's statement of financial position, will not appear in the consolidated statement of financial position but it will affect our calculation for goodwill. So let's first look at that. So let me move the statement to the left. And now we can look at that. How do we calculate goodwill? Now we have done them in the previous lessons. Okay, but here when we're dealing with non-controlling interest, here is the formula for goodwill. You calculate it by taking the payment for shares in the subsidiary plus non-controlling interest at acquisition minus the share capital of the subsidiary at acquisition minus the pre-acquisition retained earnings okay so you can see a bit of difference between how we do it when we have non-controlling interest and how we do it when it's a wholly owned subsidiary okay so let's look at the goodwill now we have the payment for shares in the subsidiary which is the 30,000 rand the investment in the 30,000 shares in chapel limited at cost okay and then the non-controlling interest at acquisition we will need to calculate that and the share capital of subsidiary at acquisition we already have that which is the one rand ordinary shares in the subsidiary which is the one rand ordinary shares of the subsidiary of 40,000 rand minus pre-acquisition retained earnings we don't have pre-acquisition retained earnings because coco limited purchased the subsidiary at its incorporation like we've already mentioned how do we calculate the non-controlling interest at acquisition? Well, we calculate it by taking the share capital at acquisition times the non-controlling interest percentage. Well, if the parent company owns 75%, that means the non-controlling interest percentage is 25%. So the share capital at acquisition was 40,000 rand. It has not changed. So we'll take the 40,000 rand times the 25% and it will give us the non-controlling interest at acquisition of 10,000 rent now that we have the 10,000 rand we have all that we need to do to calculate goodwill so the goodwill will be the payment for shares in the subsidiary which is the 30,000 rand over here in the parents statement of financial position plus the non-controlling interest at the position which we have just calculated of 10,000 rand minus the share capital of the subsidiary at acquisition and the share capital of the subsidiary at acquisition was 40,000 rand and then you also deduct the pre-acquisition retained earnings and we've established we did not have any pre-acquisition retained earnings. So we have our answer of zero. Okay, so there's no goodwill here. So we will not put any goodwill. Now that we have done that, we just need to cancel out the investment in 30,000 shares in the subsidiary because it does not go into the consolidated statement of financial position as we had also explained in our previous lessons okay and we have no goodwill as well now we can just continue moving along current assets we add the two together obviously unless you have the intra group trading which we have dealt with before and we'll deal with again you'll find all the links to those lessons in the description below so we just add the current assets together we are not told anything about intra group trading so we will just add 45,000 plus 35,000 it gives us 80,000 rand and we just add the two together and we will get the total assets of 165,000 rand. Now we're moving along the ordinary shares. Remember the ordinary shares that appears in the consolidated statement of financial position is the parent's ordinary shares. So we'll just take the 80,000 rand of the parent and put it there. And then the retained earnings. Now here it's very important for us to pay careful attention. The retained earnings, obviously all the retained earnings for the parent company, Coco Limited, that is 25,000 rand, will be part of the retained earnings for the consolidated statement of financial position and the portion of the retained earnings of the subsidiary. Which portion is that? The 75% of post-acquisition retained earnings of the subsidiary. And how do we get that? 
Well, the consolidated retain earnings at year end will be the parent retain earnings, and we have mentioned it's the 25,000 rand, plus group share of subsidiaries post-acquisition retain earnings. Very important that it's post-acquisition. And remember, all the retain earnings for our subsidiary here is post-acquisition because the subsidiary was acquired at its incorporation. Okay, so we will add the group share of subsidiaries post-acquisition retained earnings. And how do we do that? The consolidated retained earnings is a 25,000 rand for the parent company plus the group share of the subsidiaries post-acquisition retained earnings, which is the 75% of the subsidiaries retained earnings of 10,000 rand. And we have the consolidated retained earnings of 32,500 rand. I hope you're following well along on how to calculate the group retained earnings when you have non-controlling interest. Okay, so we just put the 32,500 rand over there. And the other thing that we need to do under the equity section is to calculate the non-controlling interest. Remember the non-controlling interest, like we mentioned in our very first slide, goes into the equity section of the consolidated statement of financial position. Okay, it is part of the consolidated statement of financial position to show that we have an amount which does not belong to the group. So the non-controlling interest at the end will be the non-controlling interest at acquisition plus the non-controlling interest share of Chapel Limited's post-acquisition retained earnings. Remember, the parent is not the only one getting a share of the retained earnings of the subsidiary. So we've already calculated the non-controlling interest at acquisition. Remember, it was the 40,000 rand times the 25%, which is a non-controlling interest, and it gave us 10,000 rand. Now we need to calculate the non-controlling interest share of Chapel Limited's post-acquisition retained earnings. And the retained earnings for Chapel Limited, which is a subsidiary, is a 10,000 rand, and 25% of that belongs to the non-controlling interest. So the non-controlling interest at year end is a 10,000 rand at acquisition, plus the retained earnings of 10,000 rand for the subsidiary times 25%, and gives us a total of 12,500 rand. That is the non-controlling interest. So we're going to put 12,500 rand over there. And then the next thing that we need to do is just add the current liabilities. Remember, we don't have intra-group trading. So we add the two together and it gives us 40,000 Rand. And then we have completed our consolidated statement of financial position. Obviously, we've just done the calculations. So you can see our total assets is 165,000 Rand and our total equity and liabilities is also 165,000 Rand. So they still balance. And this is how the consolidated statement of financial position as at the year end 28 February 2020 will look like. That is what it looks like. You can see we have the non-controlling interest portion. Remember, we removed the investment in the subsidiary and also we didn't include the share capital of the subsidiary. And this is how you do the consolidated statement of financial position when you have non-controlling interest. I hope it has made sense. And if you have gained value from this lesson, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.